Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Five Ways Technology is Revolutionizing System Design and Life Cycle Management, provided by Connected Security Expo and sponsored by System Surveyor. My name is Nicole English and I am the Education Manager for Connected Security Expo at ISC West. Before we get started, I just want to address a few housekeeping notes. If at any time you have difficulty hearing the webinar, first check the speaker volume on your computer. You can also dial into our conference line, which is shown in the audio portion of the control panel on the right side of your screen. This webinar is being broadcasted live. If you have any questions during the session, go ahead and type them into the question box on the bottom right side of your screen. We will be doing a live Q&A session at the end of the webinar, and any technical questions will be addressed immediately by our support staff. Lastly, this webinar will be recorded for future viewing. You will receive a link to the archived webinar following the event. Feel free to forward that to any colleagues that may have missed the session. Now, without further delay, I am happy to introduce today's speakers. Mike Intag, Director of Business Development for System Surveyor. Mike has more than 20 years of experience designing and deploying IP networks and electronic security systems. He started his career working for system integrators and achieved the designation of RCDD, Registered Communications Distribu Distribution Designer. Mike has worked for a number of manufacturers in the security industry in leadership roles, including system engineering, product management, and business development. He has a MS in technology commercialization from the McComb School of Business at the University of Texas. Maureen leads System Surveyor's marketing efforts. She has more than 20 years of experience working with innovative B2B technology companies in product marketing and customer engagement. She's worked with large companies such as Tivoli, an IBM company, Life Size Communications, and numerous emerging growth companies in Austin and around the globe. I will now turn this over to Maureen to start. Great, right, thank you so much, Nicole. Um, we really appreciate the ISC West team doing a, a fantastic job putting together this webinar with us, so much appreciated from our end. We, I think we've had a super turnout for today, so I hope everybody enjoys the webinar. And just a really quick look at our agenda. Um, you know, we want to talk about how electronic security system design works today. Um, maybe if you're not using a tool like System Surveyor, um, and why we, we thought and our founders thought, um, who all come from the security industry, why it needed to change and why it, it needs a completely new approach. And I think you'll get excited about that um, and you're going to see a great demo from my colleague Mike. Um, we're also going to talk though about how System Surveyor supports the entire life cycle of electronic security systems. It's easy to, to get caught up in just the design phase, and, and that's where things start most definitely. But it, as it turns out, it, it really impacts um, the, the entire life cycle, as we say here. And then um, we'll give a, a demonstration that's you know, what everybody's really excited about, and talk about you know, how we're building an excited community of security leaders who are embracing this tool from you know, end users who are corporations, campuses, um, anyone who has security systems, including surveillance and intrusion detection and access control and all those components, to systems integrators who try to work as a team to deliver um, you know, great systems and the support for those systems. So, um, so we'll, we'll share some of the feedback we've gotten so far. Um, and then we're gonna have a live Q&A, so we hope you can stay for that as we try to take as many questions as we can. So with that, I'm gonna, I would like to first turn it over to Mike to talk a little bit about sort of um, what we saw as the pain points and the challenge. Yeah, thanks, Maureen. Um, yeah, and so as, as Nicole said, I've been doing system design, you know, back in all the way back in my early career that goes back into the early 90s. And 
um, you know, since that time, not a whole lot has changed. You know, we're still doing what we call a traditional site survey, where you take a paper design, uh, paper floor plan, go on site. That could be a PDF, uh, could be a big blueprint, uh, could even be something you scratched up on a piece of paper. But uh, either way, we use this kind of as the base for our, our site walk. So we take that, that design, that floor plan, walk around the facility, mark up locations for uh, equipment, potential equipment mounting. Um, and then we're also pulling out a notepad, taking some notes, um, or like, you know, some of us have been doing this a while, we try and do this in our head. We do a mental checklist of, of, of notes of, of things, and it's not always the best practice, uh, because really at this point we're just collecting data. Um, so, so then we may pull out our camera phone, take some pictures, um, really just to jog our memory, because whether we're walking the site for two hours or two days, um, it is a data collection process. And we're taking all that information and we're bringing it back to the office, sitting down at our PC, and, and then we do what we call data assimilation. We're taking that, that physical, uh, those physical notes and we're putting them into an electronic format. So I may take my paper floor plan, put that into a Visio or an AutoCAD. I may take my, my notes, put those into a Word doc or an Excel spreadsheet, um, and then I'm taking those pictures and I'm trying to relabel them, pull them off my phone, uh, and match them up with my drawing. And, and that's a lot of effort. And usually there's not a good way to present that uh, in your final design. So, so those, those pictures just get left in a folder someplace. You know? And so we, you know, in this we saw that you're, you're really doubling your work here. You're, doing the data collection, and then you're having to go back and, and redo that work. Um, and they're, they're in that process, there's a chance for losing that information. Um, and then in the collaboration itself, it's really one person sitting down doing that design. So the only way to collaborate is through emails, uh, phone calls, and maybe even additional on-site meetings. So there's a whole lot of back and forth that happens in this process. And anytime you have back and forth, there's a chance for lost data and miscommunications. Uh, but an even bigger disconnect happens when we go from the design phase to the installation phase. So as a project manager, I'm lucky if I get a scope of work, a bill of materials, and a set of plans. If I get all that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the winner category. A lot of times I've seen it where uh, I've been on site and a box of cameras shows up and there's just a room number labeled on each box. And so at that point you're just leaving it up to the installer to design your system. You know, not a great practice, um, but I'm certainly not going to get you know access to all those notes that that the designer took down. I'm not going to get access to those photos either, typically. Um, and then at the end of the project, as a as a project manager, I'm having to come up with my own final documentation. And unless somebody's re, you know demanding that I give them as built drawings, I'm just going to give them a spreadsheet. Um, and so now the, the project's over and nobody has as built including the service manager who has to service you know that system for the for the life cycle so so what typically happens three months down the road the service manager gets a call for uh, a down item he sends a technician out there blind that technician has an address and a contact but he doesn't really, you know, and maybe a, a description of the problem, but he does, really doesn't know what he's walking into. And then he ends up relying on uh, the, the local site contact to show him where that, that is. He doesn't have the right tools. And so there's, you know, in, in this whole process, there's, there's just, we looked at it and we said, hey, there's just got to be a better way to do this. Um, so we looked around, uh, couldn't find it, and decided to build it. And so that's, that's how System Surveyor was created. Yeah, thanks, Mike. You know, you did a great job of pointing out the precise reasons why our founders, and who are all security leaders themselves, as I mentioned, you know, knew there had to be a better way. And you know, all this technology has come along, and um, mobile technology, and, and software as a service, and the cloud, and all these great things. So, what if you could go from capturing all this information, like you see on the left? having that paper floor plan and but what what ends up becoming a little bit of a manual disconnected approach to that information gathering that you know is frankly a little bit inefficient and inaccurate and you, you brought up you know for every hour that the team is out you know capturing that design information there's there's another hour and sometimes more than that back at the office pulling that together to this picture on the right which we're going to show you in a moment which is a cloud mobile and cloud-based tool to capture all that information in one place and now put yourself in a position to collaborate securely with, with the team. 
Um, and that could include the systems integrator working actually directly with customers. From an integrator standpoint, we've seen we have one integrator that has gotten really creative with this and had you know a headquarters location in Atlanta, but had a, a, a national customer in California and determined that the, the site survey they had done was not comprehensive and worked with um, a PSA security partner and had them actually complete out the site survey using system surveyor and, and share that design back. So there's some really creative things going on that maybe we didn't even imagine happening when you have a different type of tool. Um, but before we show you the tool, which is coming up very soon, um, we did want to talk a little bit more about um, looking at the impact of this kind of tool in terms of the entire life cycle of systems. So. Um, as I mentioned, we have folks on the webinar both from companies and campuses that manage their facilities and security systems and also the systems integrators. And I think you'll see that all of these actually can end up being relevant. You know, from a sales perspective, of course, this is um, the goal is to provide excellent client service and do it efficiently with their team. Uh, system Surveyor enables this to be much better, to gather more accurate, um, better information from the front end and have more standardized site surveys. You know, Mike was talking about trying to keep that all in your head. You know, well, when you have 20, 25 years of experience, you're probably good at that. But when you have a new team member, that can be difficult to ramp them and make sure that they consistently gather that information. In terms of design, engineers say that a picture is worth a thousand words. I've heard that so many times. It's one of my favorite quotes. But by getting that better preliminary information that's related to those images and pictures, you know, was that from the second floor and which door was that? You know, what if you can associate those images and, um, and pull them in together? And the other piece of this, you see the note project documentation. One thing that happens with this type of tool is that documentation is not an afterthought. It's being built as a living document as you work within System Surveyor. So keep that in mind as you're looking at the demonstration. Yeah, Maureen, sure. I'd like to. Maureen, can I interject here real quick? Sure. sure. Um, well, you know, one thing I want to add to the design aspect of this is, is we really, you know, we look at this tool kind of. We like to call it a force multiplier because, you know, you certainly need an engineer to design that, but um, it, with, with with this tool, you can actually uh, put that iPad in the hands of a lot of other people that and and free that engineer's time up so they can go out and collect the data. And and like you said, Maureen, the key to it is being able to take photos, annotate those photos, and and have them be connected back to the system types on that design. But it just by collecting that information now now. Uh, you know, it, it enables the engineer to be doing what he does best rather than walking around a site. Right. And then, Mike, you know, you hit on, on a slide or two before. Well, you know, it's funny how those annotated photos might be great for the engineer who's developing the design. But, oh, man, and number three, the installation person doesn't have access to those. Wouldn't, that, that would be right. a shame, right? So right. when it comes to installation, having annotated photos and referenceable plans makes their job much more efficient and again, more accurate. And this is where using a tool in a team starts to really stand out. So it touches operations, installers, um, clients, all of that communication. And then the fourth and fifth one, um, when we look at service and maintenance, you know, the missing piece is usually having up-to-date access to the as-built plans. Start to think about this as a living plan, you know, not not some, you know, as soon as you print something and then you're in a document, it's it's no longer up to date. So, um, Mike, you maybe we're going to comment on this area too. Yeah, I mean, so you know, so that's the the number one. <laughs> I, you know, we, we we have quite a few uh, users that you know are end users, and their their number one complaint for me is that they they don't get as built documentation, and you know, or if they do get it, it's never updated. And it's it's not easy to do if you're using you know CAD. It's it's kind of an expensive process to every time you make a movement add or a change to go over there and and uh, you know document that. So so one we make it really easy for anybody to go out in the field and document it, but also to to keep that updated those updated records as well. Right. And same thing. You know, one thing I want to point out on maintenance. I think your your mind can go there pretty quickly, and um, as it relates to service. But uh, one thing from an end user's perspective, and we think about um, one of our clients as a very large campus in an urban location in the United States, and um, they have actually 85 different buildings. And this person was, you know, a new 
security um, director at the organization and said, I, I simply don't know where all my cameras, my access control and points are throughout and really looked at system surveyor from a little bit of a different angle than maybe a system integrator would um, purely from an asset management standpoint. How, how can I keep you know this campus secure if I don't know actually where everything is, what status it's at. And so, um, so again, different points of view along the life cycle of, of ESS. Um, with that, I think, um, do you have any additional comments, Mike, before we go over to the demo? No, you can go ahead and turn it over to me. I'm going to pull my iPad up on screen here. All right. This just takes, takes us a moment as you're going to see it live and in person. Okay, show hey, my screen. Yeah, so I'm showing my screen, and then I'm going to go ahead and display full screen. You see my iPad okay? It looks great. Okay, great. So, you know, so this is, um, you know, so, so we have two aspects to our tool. One is the mobile aspect, which is uh, an iPad app. Um, and then the, the other is what we call our cloud workspace. So that's any, any web browser you can access the tool. And, and they work together. So when you have an account, um, you know, basically I'll do my designs on my iPad app when I'm in the field. I'll upload those to the cloud and then um, I can access that on my PC or really any, any web device, even, even like an, an Android tablet with a browser. Right? So um, the, the benefit of the iPad app is I don't have to have a network connection, so it's a, it's a great tool to have in the field. Um, what you're looking at here is a design we've started. It's kind of midway through. We've imported a floor plan, which is what you're seeing on the right, and that is we can take in a, a JPEG, a PDF, or a PNG file. Those are the formats that we can import. Once we import those, we have um, what we call our canvas. And so uh, our floor plan becomes our canvas. Over to our left-hand side is our system types. So these are system types that we've developed. We continue to add to them um, based on user request. And, uh, and we'll continue to add categories as well. We just added fire. So, um, so that's a new category for us. We've had it out about 60 days. Um, so any of you in the fire industry, if you get a chance to evaluate these, if you can give us feedback, we, we love to hear it. Um, we also have information technology intrusion detection, access control, and video surveillance. So all of these different system types, we have, um, have icons, which we call system elements. And each one of those elements represents a different type of equipment. So if I open up access control, I can just grab a single door here, and I can you know, just drag and drop it right into my plan. And I can do that while I'm walking the facilities very easily with my iPad, so I, one device, you know, I'm walking the site, dragging and dropping elements, all right, but I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to pull on fixed camera, and I'm going to bring that right here, and we will go ahead and zoom in on that so you guys can get a good look at it, um, and so fixed camera is a little bit different than some of our other elements in the fact that it has this area of coverage tool, but when I tap on any of the elements, a menu bar pops up. Um, so to control that area of coverage tool, we have the control button. So when I click on control, this control box opens, and I'm able to change the direction and also that viewing angle, you know. And then I just tap off of that, and I, and I can still move that element anywhere I'd like. But what's common across pretty much all of our elements is the attributes category. And the attributes, I'm going to click on that now, this is where we collect data. So these are those checklists I was talking about. So we have naming information, installation, functional, maintenance, and configuration. Um, naming information, you see we give it an automatic numerical identifier, which as I drop more of the same type of element, it counts those and, and it renames them. Um, I can also put in my own descriptive label, my room location, uh, and then the installation status. So we default everything to proposed, assuming that, okay, for your first system design, it's going to be proposed, but uh, you, you can change that status, and then we can actually filter by status as well. Um, and then, of course, manufacturer model number. Uh, we wanted to make this tool so anybody can use it. So it wasn't, you're not locked into certain manufacturers and models. Uh, you, can, you can put in your own, okay? Installation information. Um, you know, these are those simple checklist items that a lot of people still do in their head, but um, we're going to get them down so everybody can share those. So I'm going to say it's an interior camera, it's a wall mount, finished drywall, and we're going to mount that at 16 feet on a wall mount arm. And then if I'd like, I can type on my installation notes and type in those additional notes. 
functional information, and again, functional installation, these are specific to the type of device. So a camera is going to be much different than an alarm or, uh, or a smoke detector or whatever. And so uh, for this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go, I'll go bullet camera, we'll go IP, 2 megapixel, standard shell, you know, and I can just checklist through these items, and then again, I can do functional notes, okay? Um, if it's, it, I'm in the install phase or, or maybe an asset tracking phase, I can go into my configuration tab, collect information about the device there, um, and if it's a maintenance contract, I can type that kind of information in as well. So let's say it's a semi-annual, we'll pick a date, June, and you know, we change it to semi-annual, and then I can see who, who did that last maintenance, who did that last installation. So once I collect all that data, now I can go ahead, um, as I walk the site, I, I can hit save. I, I save my design, and, you know, as a, before I even leave the site, if I have an internet connection, I can go ahead and upload that to the cloud. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to my survey overview so I can show you guys what some of the reports that we create look like. So I'm going to click on my report tab here. And our first report is a totals report. So I can buy element type. We can, we, we total all those elements. Um, the next one's uh, a survey photo tour. And so, so basically it's going to give all the photos you've taken it and, and have them labeled. And then the, the more detailed report is the elements and containers report. So I can go down all the way to that level of detail for every single device. So I'm going to open up that first FCAM001 by tapping on this little arrow at the end here. And, you know, with that, I, you, you can see pictures, you can see the naming information, installation, functional, maintenance, and configuration. Okay? And actually, let me go back. I'm going to jump back to the report because one thing I didn't show you, which I want to, um, I'll go ahead and open up this report again. Bear with me. I'm going to go back to edit survey. Um, one thing I didn't show you is the, the ability to capture photos. So I'm going to click on that. And when I go back to my attributes here, if I have a photo of that location, I can click on the landscape and pull that in for my photo roll, but typically I don't. So here's where I'm going to use my iPad, and there's a little camera icon right below that. I'm going to click on that, and I'll do it live for you here. And I'm going to take a picture in the corner of my room here. Might be a slight delay. Okay, and once I take that picture, my photo annotation tool opens up. All right, so I'm going to select red, and then I'm going to select this ellipse here, and I'm going to mark that off. And then I'm going to switch over to black and mark a note for myself. And just to make sure everybody knows, put a little arrow in and hit done. So now that photo uh, is attached with that element. So there's no, that, so, so when I, I showed you that, that photo tour, you don't have to connect the dots. Everything's together. And I can not only do one photo, but I can do multiples for each element. So in the case of a camera, I may take a picture of where I want to mount it, turn around, take a picture of the room, box that out. Um, and, and with a team account, you can even take up to five pictures. So uh, in the case of like access control, you may want to take multiple pictures of a door and locking hardware. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we're going to go back to the site dashboard. So we break it down by uh, sites and by surveys. Okay. And so within each site, each survey is kind of a, a usually a, a, plan, a floor on the building. Um, we're going to go, we run the second floor. I'm going to hit upload here, and this is how I sync it. It's asking me if I want to keep the edit. Um, I'm on a team account, so if I release that edit, anybody on my team then can become the editor, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it for now. As it syncs up, uh, you'll, you'll see it'll go from uploading to synced. Now I can jump back to my web, get this guy out of the way. and you can see that second floor is there. The, the, the web has a very similar look and feel to, to the app, so uh, you should be able to navigate it you know, pretty much. If you can navigate one, uh, there's not really a learning curve on the other. So I'm going to click on second floor here, and we're going to open up uh, this survey. 
And because this is on the cloud, now I can share this with all my other team members. So if I have an installer who's on site, he can log into this survey right here. He can say, okay, I'm, inst I'm installing this camera right here. He clicks on it. This is a read-only for him because I'm the editor. But he can, he can click on attributes, and then he can pull up, you know, he'll, he's going to have those pictures. He's going to have, you know, the, the installation information. So he clicks on installation. He, he's going to know, hey, it's a wall mount arm. We're mounting it at 14 feet. Um, and it's it's on drywall. He can al he's also going to have access to that functional information, so he knows you know exactly you know what type of camera it is. And then he may, if you put this configuration information in, he'll have that as well. So he'll have the frame rate, format, and and all that's at his fingertips, as opposed to just looking at a floor plan and you know kind of guessing where that thing goes on, on in that room. There's with this. You know, there's no question that it's supposed to be mounted right there, as opposed to uh, just looking at a, at a, a two-dimensional floor, floor plan. All right. The other thing he can do is, if he has to make a change, he can click on Edit Survey. You know, and just just like we have on the iPad, we can you know drag and drop elements, move elements. Um, so you know, maybe he wants to go in here and you know add a fire alarm horn. He can just drag that on. And drop it in, you know, and and once again make all those changes. And then if it's an existing, let's say he wants to move a camera, he can do that, you know. Again, he can he can change, make all the changes necessary. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot this back to you, Maureen. I'm going to change presenter here. Okay, sounds great. All right. All right, Mike, can you see my PowerPoint again? I can, you're on demo page. Great. Well, that was a super demo. I know that's what people really get excited about, about coming on and, um, you know, hopefully uh, there's more to it for sure, uh, but we like to try to give, you know, a, a good sense of it. We've got a bunch of videos on our website too that you might want to drill into, you know, one that goes deeper into recording and so forth. So just go to resources and videos on our web page. Um, now, in terms of what people are saying, um, you know, we talk about this community, this group of people across the ecosystem that are responsible for security, such an important area of our lives. And again, security leaders, systems integrators, A&Es, vendors, everyone's excited about this. In fact, we've been out at a couple different shows like the ISC West show and, and others. Um, and here are things that people are saying. And in fact, you can add a testimonial at our website. Um, as I mentioned before, our friend David Fogel at Star Asset says the picture is worth a thousand words. And I think it's really important. You know, it's as if I walked the site myself. So he's an engineer at a systems integrator. And he said, you know, now I can have kind of more junior engineers and account managers out helping me leverage and, and do those site surveys, you know, consistently collecting that information. And then it's kind of leveraging him against more projects, but not losing accuracy, actually only um, getting that to be better. And then on our blogs as a more detailed case study from him. We've also worked with Spencer Rundell, who um, is at SSP. And I like what he has to say that he's talking about, you know, this can really move the industry forward to provide better service and value for customers. And I think I mentioned St. Louis University earlier that, you know, that's from a campus standpoint, a complex urban campus with 85 buildings, you know, looking at this from an asset management standpoint. So just a couple of, um, of things that people have talked about and you can find some more testimonials out there and we'd love to hear what, what you might have to say after you try it. So in terms of a summary, you know, this is all about efficiency, uh, accuracy, getting better at it. And one of the things we're finding, it, I won't say that it will 100% eliminate CAD, but it is on a lot of projects. You know, CAD and graphic design require, you know, extensive experience and for some projects that will be required. But from what I'm talking to, and I know Mike is talking to with a lot of um, organizations that are doing this from a design perspective, is that a lot of projects actually don't need CAD. Um, it's reducing that data assimilation time. And in the bottom right hand corner, you see Cleve Carey, who's a senior director of physical security. He talks about reducing design time by 40 to 50%. And that's back to what Mike said. You know, by the time you've gotten back to the office, you still have a lot of work to do to just assimilate all that information and, and data and the pictures and so forth. We think it's improving accuracy of planning and design and really enabling a completely different level of collaboration. You know, at some point, maybe seeing the vendors in, in the collaboration mix. So we'll, 
we'll see that, I think, develop over time. And some of that's driven by technology that we have access to. It's sort of, sort of the perfect storm, the right time for it. And then this ability to have system changes that are in a living as-built design and eliminating these as-built updates that can be difficult for people to access. And, you know, it's all about saving money through greater efficiency. Um, Mike, would you like to add to the summary any, any additional details you've learned just being out in the field? No, I mean, you know, the main thing is, you know, we, we, we find ourselves with having, you know, two types of, of customer bases here. And one is, is the system integrator that tend to use it, um, you know, uh, on a regular basis for, for managing their systems better than they were able to do in the past. And then also the end users who, you know, have multiple locations and they want to, they want to see, you know, they want to know what, they want to track their assets, have more control in that design process, and and be part of that collaboration. So, um, you know, we think we have a great tool for that. We, we try and make it really simple, um, and it, it's very hard to build a tool that's that's easy to use. But we know if it's not easy to use, um, and there's a big learning curve, then people won't use it. So, uh, you know, so that's I think that's what we've done. Yeah, that, the art and science of creating something that is easy to use but can has a sophistication to make uh, make it work for everyone. So that's that's what we try to keep in mind as sort of our our promise every day, right, Mike? That's it. Um, and we've we, we, you know I think interestingly on the fire alarm side, uh, you you pulled that up at the end of the demo. You know that mm -hmm. wasn't our our deep expertise area, but it was certainly right. an area that we were able to add on based on working collaboratively with. Um, you know, some customers who are really interested in that area, and I think we'll see more of that. Um, but, you know, one thing I forgot to do is encourage at the front end um, is that we would love to take some live questions. We have a couple that have come in. You can put them into the question window on the GoToWebinar interface on the right-hand side of your screen, I believe. Um, and I'll have a couple of questions, Mike, that I'm going to put up Mike's contact information too. Okay. Hopefully you can stay with us. One question is, um, does the shape of the elements mean anything? Yeah, so so that's a good question. So we, uh, you know, typically what you're going to see on there, most of our elements are, are round, and we call those components. Um, so uh, the, I think the main thing to understand here is any element that you see that has a border around it, we call that a container. And I, I didn't uh, have a chance to demo that for you, but basically what a container is, it's an element, a standalone element on its own, but it also, you can put other elements inside. So like in the case of uh, that single door that I showed you when I dragged that over, um, when I drag, I can drag in a card reader and, and other devices, which are going to be around that door. And what it allows me to do is really clean up that drawing. So, um, you know, if uh, you know, I'm going to encourage everybody after this call, if you're not already one of our users, to go ahead and sign up for a free basic account. Uh, and even if you don't have an iPad, you can use our the web version and start testing all this out immediately. Because uh, our free basic version, all you need to sign up is an email address and, uh, and you're, you're off to the races. You, there's, there's 10, you'll get 10 fully functional surveys. The limitation on them, I think, is like 50 elements. So um, you're not gonna use it on a, a very large facility, but at the same time, it'll really give you a, a good feel for how the device works. But uh, go ahead, try that container function out. You just, you know, drag and drop an element on top of the other element. And if you do have any trouble, uh, please email me and I'll, I'll walk you through it. Great. Mike, we've got a bunch of other questions that have come in, so I'm going to kind of start walking through them. Thanks, folks. Okay. Please keep them coming because we have a little bit of time here. Um, so one question is, can you save your design in the program rather than the cloud if you have no connectivity on site? Yes, yeah, so so if you're on on the iPad app, um, you do not have to be connected. So um, you can do that design. It's it's on the iPad. Uh, you never really even have to put it in the cloud if you don't want to, because I can create reports right in the iPad and email them straight out of there if I'd like to. But uh, yes, that's 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 one of the nice things about the app versus if you are using our tool on an Android or a Windows uh, Surface device. Um, you know, and you're using the web browser, you will need to be connected because you're really doing that design on the cloud. But, uh, but with, right, with, an iPad, with an iPad, you don't have to worry about that. Right. Um, which kind of leads us to another question. Is it just for iPads? Yeah, and that, that, that kind of, I kind of answered that question and, and no, it's not. You're going to get your best mobile user experience with the iPad just 
because you don't need to have to worry about connectivity issues. Uh, but you know, try it out. It's I, I've I've taken uh, an, an Android out in the field and I've used it in the same the same way, just using the the web browser. And I've I had that tethered to my phone as a backhaul as a hotspot, and I had pretty decent connectivity, but uh, had no problem dragging and dropping. Uploading pictures may take a little bit more time, depending on your, you know, your internet connection. Because every time you take a picture on there, it's you're uploading that to the to the cloud. Yeah, Mike. Sorry about that. I was looking ahead at the the um, questions, and I didn't hear your full answer before. Um, okay. That's so, right. can you tell us about the IT assets features, specifically, what kind of assets iCons can, can be used, etc. Yeah. So let's let let me just kind of open that up, and I'll go through all the different ones here. So we have, bear with me for a second. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, so so in here we, we've, you know, we, we've made some kind of generic ones. We have a network switch, we have a server, uh, UPS, we have a wireless uh, node, um, which we call it wireless transceiver, but you can use it for pretty much any wireless device. Uh, we have a workstation, a patch panel, uh, a router, firewall, uh, video monitor, and an enclosure. Okay, and so, you know, I encourage you to, if you have any that we're missing, and, and as long as it makes sense, we add these on a regular basis. So, uh, and we, we update, just, just to let you guys know how we kind of operate, um, we are software as a service, so we do a major release every 60 to 90 days, but as far as elements, we add these every couple of weeks based on you know, user demand. So if you came to me and said, hey, you know, there's this device that I'd like to add, um, as long as it makes sense, we'll do it. And as long as it, it kind of falls in line with all the other element types. And uh, so, so I would encourage you to check and update your elements on a regular basis because we are constantly adding those. Yeah, definite benefit of software as a service. Um, you know, if, if you've ever used salesforce.com or one of those applications, you know, you don't have to Next time you come back, everything new is, is, is available. So, and that's where the community is really coming in to play to uh, help us build this out. Um, yeah. You know, a couple people have asked, just as an FYI, if they could get the copy of the presentation to show their managers. Absolutely. We'll be sending that out after um, the presentation, as well as the on-demand access to the video um, of, the, of this actual webinar. So a couple more questions, though. Um, another one is... Can you scale the size of the icons so they do not cover up as much of the background floor plan? Yeah, absolutely. And Maureen, if if you can change me back to the presenter. Oh sure, let's do that. Oh, sure, there seems yeah. like a couple things that I that yeah. you could be showing here, right? Right, right. It's headed back your way, Mike. Okay. And I can still see questions, so if we may be able to take some more questions while you're in in your mode. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so let me let me show you this. So, up in um, you know, this is getting kind of a little bit in the, the to do zone. But when I click on that little pencil icon, there's a few things I can do here. One is I can change the size of those elements. So right now you see I'm on the largest, but I can you know reduce that all the way down to to very tiny. And and you know we do that for very large plans. So if you have a hospital, um, you know, the, if you were to use this icon in a hospital, it, that may cover up the entire room. Um, so, so, so we don't, we don't have an auto scale on there, but we do have this, this automated one. And you can, you can do this at any time. Uh, the other thing is we can replace the floor plan canvas. So if you have a design um, that you've created, you've have 100 elements on there, uh, a couple of walls get knocked down and some moves happen, now you can just, as long as the, the design the plan's the same size, you can just swap that out for a new floor plan as well. Actually, yeah, that was one of our next questions. Maybe you could see that oh, one. Okay. Um, but that no, was exactly, I, I didn't. You know, how I didn't do you it. modify a floor plan if they add or remove a wall while keeping yeah. the elements in the same yeah. relation? So, so. Yeah, so it's under that same area, that little pencil, and you know you can just change it out there. Another question is, if you designate a device as proposed versus existing, does mm -hmm. the color of the icon change on the plan or canvas, or is the only way to determine the difference through the reporting? Yeah, so, so you'll notice there's a little P on this camera right here. That's because it's set to proposed. Uh, we have some different, you know, if we, if we go in place, it basically takes that away. If we go to, to be replaced, we have a different 
you know, so we have these different symbols on there. And then, in addition to that, I can also filter by, by type. So if I click on my filter tab up here, and I just want to see everything that's been proposed, and I click off these other ones, so that, that one goes away. If I want to, you know, if I, if I click off my proposed, everything else gets filtered out. That's great, Mike. I, I think you're answering another question just by being in there. Can you zoom okay. in and out of large floor plans? And I believe that you've yeah, kind of been yeah. doing that. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And you know, and, and one of the things that you know that um, we you know, that I didn't address is like on the import. So when we import, um, the, the the best way to import is through an iPad because we have a, a feature uh, where you can actually zoom in and get very detailed drawings. So um, the it's it's a step in the process of the import. It'll say zoom in to this this area, and as I zoom in, uh, you just have to be a little bit patient, wait for that resolution to load. Uh, once it does, and you hit next, then then from then on out, you'll get very crisp drawings. Right. And then, um, then of I course, anytime with the iPad or with the web, you can also zoom in on those. Can you also show where to add field notes? Sure. So, like in in the case of on the individual element. Um, under the attributes, we have under installation, we have a notes section, and on functional, we have a notes section. Um, notes for the over, overall survey, I'll show you that. We go back to the survey overview. I won't change that. And in the survey, we have a survey info field. So if I just want to take note, general notes over the survey, um, I can put them in here. I just click edit, and then I can type notes about that individual survey. Great. Thanks, Mike, for showing that. You know, a couple of people have asked about kind of our subscription and the trial, if we have a trial period. Do you want to comment yeah. on that? Yeah. So let me show you this. We'll go back to open up a new one. Yeah, he's probably heading to our pricing page, which is a great place to uh, no. sort of compare the subscriptions. Well, beyond that, this is this is the pricing page is also where you sign up for your free basic. So you just go to pricing, pricing options, and then these are our three plans. So um, you know, so our first one, you know, which I encourage you all to do is sign up for basic. You just go down here and click sign up. Um, it'll give you ten surveys, so no time limit. You can you know do it over uh, you know as long as you want. You'll have that basic subscription, and it just it'll max you out at ten. So if you did ten, you could delete a couple and do a couple more. Um, but then professional is a single user license. That's thirty nine dollars a month. If you pay for it for the entire year, you get a ten percent savings. And then we do the same thing with our team account. And with team, it's ninety nine dollars a month, and that includes one user who's typically your admin, and then for every additional user, um, it's $25 a month. So that's, you know, so basic, there, there are some advantages in Team, some, some small other things, but the, the main thing is with Team, you can share and collaborate. Whereas with a, a single user license, you know, you could share that with another member, but it's, it's not really suited to be able to pass drawings or, you know, surveys back and forth and, and, and hand off editing privileges back and forth. So, right, Mike, yeah, you hit a couple of questions were about, you know, what is team, you know, how do you, do you have to have a team account to share surveys? And that, I think you already answered yeah, that. Yeah, you, you do. You really do. I mean, you could, so, so we, um, you know, if in a team account, in addition to being able to share them amongst your team members, we also have a feature called send a link. So you can send a read only temporary version to somebody who's not on your team as well. So if you had a, you know, uh, I don't know, a customer or maybe a subcontractor or somebody who you just wanted to have temporary read-only access, you could do that. Mike, can you also um, show how to begin a site survey? Sure. The different ways that you can do that? Yeah. yeah, let me go ahead and I'll open this guy back up. Um, and I, you know, and you, again, you can do these both on the web version and on the iPad, um, but I'll go ahead and, and, and this is well, let me drop back one. So, first of all, when you open up the, the tool, we, we break it down by sites and then by survey. So, I've created my site, so I go ahead and I hit add site and I fill that information out. Okay, and once I've created a site, I'll click on this international headquarter building here. 
because it's already in process. And now I want to start adding surveys to that location. So to do that, in the upper right hand corner, I hit start new survey. Okay, and we have on the iPad. There's multiple ways to bring that in. It's a little more simple on the on the uh, uh, PC because you, you you really you can only bring it in through the PC on the hard drive. But um, with this, I can go through if I have a I told you it's a PDF, a JPEG, or a PNG. So if I happen to have a photo, I can hit my photo album and I can bring it in that way. Um, if I have one of my these cloud storage providers, I can tie into a folder within that. I have Dropbox, so I have a folder on there that I can use. Um, or I can email it to my iPad, and we call this your resource uh, photo folder. So if I basically if I email it to my iPad and I save it, save that copy over into my system surveyor folder, it shows up here, and I can pull it in that way. Okay, and then um, I'll show you if I don't have any of that, and this happens a lot. You know, you get on site, you have no drawings at all, so uh, you go over to uh, a fire escape plan and take a picture. So I can use this capture feature. And it's in a great drawing here, but it will do. I'll go ahead and take take a picture of that fire escape plan, and I'll hit use photo. And now I can crop that just by grabbing these these uh, corners here. It'll help me crop it, and then I can I can you know flip it 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'll hit next. Um, and then this is something that um, it's, it's a little bit more for future, but we can actually scale the drawing. So we, we set the scale um, up so we can you know grab that and you know set, set our doorway, and then then I click set up here. I'll hit three feet, you know, so that'll give me my scale. Uh, and we we created this because we're working on a cable path planning tool, and what that's going to allow you to do is to do right angles, and then you're going to be able to, you know, get get those cable distances and then get overall distances as well. Today, if I use this tool, you know, it's not really going to be very helpful, but it's there. Um, next, I. Oh, sorry, Mike. Yeah, when you're through there, we got a few more questions too. Okay, sure, sure. You know, so so next, I uh, go ahead and I, you know, uh, give that survey a name, hit done. And it's automatically going to drop that into uh, onto my dashboard, and then it's going to open up my my editing tool, so I can go straight to straight to design, as you can see. All right. Go ahead. Excellent, Mike. Um, a couple of people have asked about Surface Pro apps and Android apps. Um, you may have commented yeah. on that, but I wanted to uh, answer those. Ask you to touch on that question. Yeah. No, and, and I really didn't touch on it. I I, I we we are we are working on those right now, and so you know we had to we had to start someplace, and that was with the iPad, and that's where we chose to go first. Uh, but Android and Surface Pro are definitely something we're working on in the background. Hope to have those out by you know end of Q1. Um, we had to put them a little bit on hold because we had to revamp our web interface. Um, that was kind of our first step towards being able to work on all devices was the web interface. But we realized that still is a limitation because you do have to have that internet connection in order to work on a browser. You know, I've even Thanks. I've even done this on my 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 Samsung phone. Um, it's it's hard to work with because it's you know hard. To, it's such a small screen, but uh, but really today with the web we can do it on on any interface. But Surface and Android are coming. Okay, great. You know, we, we said this was going to be a webinar of an hour. We're still within eight to ten minutes, so, you know, most people have stayed on. We appreciate that. We do have a few more questions, so, um, Mike, if you're willing, I'll take you through just a couple more. Great yeah. questions coming in. Um, one question was, is there a key to, when you print out the final floor plan that you have designed so that the end user can easily read the symbols? You know, we haven't, we have not done that. We have, uh, we, we are, you know, working on building a legend, and I don't know when, what the ETA is on that, but that w that is to address that problem, because, yeah, you're right. Today, um, it's, we, yeah, we don't have a key. But, okay, good question, yeah. yeah. Gives us yeah. some good thoughts. Um, and then, any thoughts to add site security as a category that would include icons for fencing, gates, guardhouses, some of those physical security components? Well, you know, absolutely some of those have, have already been mentioned and are things that are, are in our pipeline, but uh, if you would follow up with me afterwards, because uh, I, I, I'd love to hear your suggestions and recommendations. 
Yeah, and M in tag, I N T A G at systemsurveyor.com. Um, and then one more question it looks like, unless anyone has any others, please send them in. Any recommendations if doing a site rather than a floor plan? Does that question make sense? Yeah, so, so like I say, you know, a site, like to us, is typically a building. Uh, but I've seen people do a site as a campus. I've even seen them do it as a section of a city for like a city-wide type deal. And then a survey is typically a floor within that building. But but again, um, you know, it could be an, an entire building. <laughs> uh, and we also have, you know, something I'll show you right here is with a team plan, you can actually create folders. So if I, uh, you know, hit, hit new folder here, um, it's going to allow me to create a folder name so I can group. You know, so it's just another form of grouping, and I can do that within a site and within a survey. So it just gives me another layer. Excellent. Mike, you've gotten a lot of nice kudos for a great demo, and I'm glad we were able to go back during the Q&A. That's really been helpful. Yeah. Why don't you send the, um, the PowerPoint back to me or um, the screen back to me so that we can yeah. um, start to wrap up. I don't have any other questions that have come in, but you know that we always welcome them, welcome them back at System Surveyor, and certainly Mike can do a follow-up with you. Um, we will be sending out um, the on-demand um, video here that if you want to share with a colleague or a manager would be great. Um, well, I'd like to pass it back over to Nicole um, so that she can wrap it up and thank ISC West again for collaborating with us on this webinar. Thank you, Maureen and Mike. That was an excellent presentation. I'd like to remind our audience that this webinar will be available for additional viewing on our website under the webinar tab at www.connectedsecurityexpo.com. You will also receive a link to the archived webinar following this event, which you can forward to any colleagues that may have missed this session. Remember to mark your calendar for this year's Connected Security Expo at ISC West, taking place April 5th through 7th, 2017 in Las Vegas. System Surveyor will be exhibiting at the show and we will have two full days of education complementing the exhibit. Thank you everyone and have a great day.